On Production is brought to you by Rapbook, the production industry's only on-demand payroll platform. With Rapbook, you can pay your crew with a click and track all your costs in real time, all in one place. To find out more about how Rapbook is transforming the way productions pay their crews, visit rapbook.com. Welcome back to On Production, presented by Rapbook. Today, I'm thrilled to have Georgia Rippon, the co-founder and CEO of Cold Open, joining us. Cold Open distributes mid-form content, providing a platform for over 270 shows from more than 1,000 creators. With a career that spans across giants like Netflix, HBO, and Showtime, Georgia brings a wealth of experience and insight into the future of content creation and distribution. I want to dive into the world of mid-form content and learn more about the vision behind Cold Open. Georgia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Cameron. Well, can you start by telling me about your journey into the entertainment industry and what led you to co-found Cold Open? Yeah, I'd be excited to. So I originally grew up in New Zealand and I trained to be a lawyer, but desperately wanted to work in film and television. So the way that I thought I'd go about that was making a web series or a mid-form show that got national attention. Um, are you familiar with what a mid-form show is, Cameron? I honestly have no idea. Tell me about it. Okay, so mid-form sits between short-form, which is a TikTok or a reel, and long-form, which is a 30-minute Netflix episode. So mid-form is an episode which is around 5 to 15 minutes long, usually episodic in nature. So there's around 2 to 10 episodes in a series. It's effectively a mini TV show made by an independent content creator. Now, Georgia, I've been really curious about this. So, you know, for many of our listeners, we are in independent film, we're in short form commercials, we're in unscripted reality, kind of longer form content. But something that kind of amazes me is like going on air flights and watching people and the media that they're watching. And it is within this kind of area that you're describing, this mid form. I mean, as you've been kind of pursuing and building out cold open, do you have any metrics or like data that articulates what the future of media consumption is and like why you see this opportunity in mid content? It definitely is the future in terms of consumption. I think part of that is because people's attention spans are shortening so much and they're not necessarily able to focus for that 30 minute Netflix episode, but they still want a story which a TikTok or a reel isn't necessarily able to sustain because it's so short in nature, it gives you a moment as opposed to a beginning, a middle and end, which really can be sustained in around that like five to 15 minute format. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of why it's interesting to the consumer. Um, in terms of the studio system, it's always been really interesting to the major Hollywood studios. And the reason for that is because the most successful shows that we've had on television actually started off as mid-form shows. So it started off with The Simpsons in the 1970s, which was a mid-form show that was cut up between the Tracy Ullman show and ultimately scaled to be the longest running animation that we have. It also was the genesis for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the longest running live action comedy that we've had. And so many other hits like Ted Lasso, Broad City, Workaholics, the list goes on. Fascinating. That really, I had never really considered that. So, you know, you have had some experience at large networks and, and at large studios like Netflix, HBO, and Showtime. How did those roles influence your approach to, to Cold Open? And, and can you help us just better understand what the vision is for Cold Open? Yeah. When working at these studios, one of the major issues that we were constantly running into is that it's really difficult to find mid-form IP on the current video platforms that we have on the internet. So YouTube, TikTok, and Vimeo. They're pretty much unsearchable for this vertical of IP that's firstly really valuable to consumers because they love to watch it. Um, and secondly, because Hollywood studios want to mine this IP. And there's no way to really go through the entirety of the search engine to pull out this kind of IP. So I essentially wanted to create a solution so that 
executives would be able to find this kind of content, identify it quickly, and then license it to make into a long form TV show. And then how does Cold Open kind of help the creators that you work with or, or what's kind of your process of, you know, cultivating and curating this sort of mid form content? So right now, there's not really a home for a creator that's making a mid form show that is going to benefit them. YouTube is really orientated towards blogging or kind of educational style live action content because it was essentially the first place on the internet where we put video. So it means it's not really made for everything and specifically this kind of mid form IP. And Vimeo is also not the home for this. It is It makes money through cloud-based software and it's essentially impossible to be able to try and search the videos that filmmakers are putting up there. What Cold Open does is it brings together a home for this kind of IP on firstly our streaming platform online, but also the iOS app that we have so that viewers are able to watch it and enjoy it and studios are able to find a certain show that they are looking for based on genre, locale, or any other kind of development bucket they're interested in. The reason that Cold Open is also going to be really important to the creator going forward is that the supply side of really great mid-form content is increasing exponentially right now. And the reason for that is we're getting firstly amazing new generative AI video tools that the creators on Cold Open and other new creators coming into the fold are experimenting with to tell these kind of narrative mid-form shows. But we're actually also getting an increased quality of the live action midform shows because we're getting these epic new tools that are involved in coloring, captioning, um, different animation. So the quality is just increasing exponentially and the need to have a platform that is dedicated to this kind of IP is becoming more important. That's fascinating. I mean, so I've not been a big consumer myself of midform content, although maybe you're, you've kind of challenged my perception because definitely like I totally hear what you're saying with the Simpsons or it's always sunny. Like I've probably been exposed to hilarious sketches that are mid form and, and in a couple of years, maybe they get fully flushed on something else. But right now, like what kind of mid form content are you seeing as being really popular? What kind of mid form content do you watch for those listening that are curious to kind of explore this as an opportunity worth producing or engaging with? Like what is sort of tools and resources or, or direction should we be going in? Because First, I think people would be very curious to see great examples of this. And then two, with our production audience here, if there is an opportunity to produce this type of content in a profitable and unique way, I'm sure folks would be very curious about it. Yeah, for sure. In terms of what I love watching, uh, a really great creator-driven story where you can really hear the voice of the creators. Um, a really cool one to check out would be Murderabilia which is an amazing story about America's real life Adams family. So it's essentially a reality show about Chad and Chelsea Shepard who buy and sell true crime artifacts. So this could be Marilyn Manson's hair, um, sneakers, someone was electrocuted in on death row, um, <laughs> self-portraits done by a cannibal. Really, it ranges the gamut. And it's an incredible watch. They're such good storytellers and they really take you across America, crisscrossing at different destinations, showing you what it's like to be able to barter with a seller, get the item, trade with another customer. It's like a really great flipping show with a really unusual bent on it and has grown a huge audience on Cold Open and they've started to get really awesome press all around the other place, like Software Underbelly, which is a YouTube show with around 5 million subscribers. Chad and Chelsea just went on that because this story really resonated with people. Um, in terms of production companies making mid-form content, yes, yes, yes. I think it is an incredible idea to prove out your proof of concept because a pilot doesn't really give you that ability to show episodic storytelling in the same way that a mid-form show does. Because television is essentially about character. So by having multiple episodes, you're able to show to whoever that you want to partner with that you can show that character growing over multiple episodes. 
a pilot to me feels a bit more stunted because you're you're mainly breaking story and you're not showing how the character can develop when you have that extra episodes. So I think it's an incredible investment to be able to do it. You can also do it for such low budget in terms of the filmmaking tools that are on offer. And even if you film something on your iPhone with the 4K capacity that we have right now, that would still be incredible. Georgia, talk to me about IP. What's the IP landscape in this kind of mid-form world? Do creators get to kind of hold on to their IP? Does this give them a better like bargaining chip when they come to the table if they have a hit and they want to like produce something greater? Like what's what's kind of landscape? How do things get split out? What are the economics behind this? And and why do you think that there's an opportunity there? So the creator that puts their show in cold open definitely gets to hold on to their IP. That's really important. They're the creator of the show. So for sure should get to benefit from that vision. Um, the way that cold open helps the creator is essentially brokering it to the studio and then taking a percentage of the budget from getting it from the mid form show to then the full length television show. This is actually an established model in film and TV for anyone who takes a piece of IP and then scales it to a longer form version. And there are a couple of companies who are also doing this in the new media landscape. We've had Wattpad, which did this with independent publishing, a really great Canadian company, which is set to IPO this year. Very exciting. Top is Media, which does this with web comics. And then obviously cold open, which we see as the next kind of iteration in terms of where creators are moving with the tools. Like a lot of people started off with writing, the next generation was with comics, and now a whole generation is growing up using video natively. So of course, that's going to be the next platform for storytelling and mining the UGC stories to make into long form version. Really fascinating. I think you you also mentioned something I'd love to get your, your thoughts on, which is that, you know, with the proliferation of these generative AI models, it has been kind of my own intuition that at least in the short term, these tools will be very powerful for mid form versus long form. And I'm just curious, like you had mentioned that that creators have been kind of playing with these already, but you're kind of expanding kind of my my mind on this related to it being really useful for these kind of mid form concepts and really just driving to see what sort of things are are particularly novel to audiences today. Have you seen any great examples of the use of these tools or what are you excited about with generative AI? Does it kind of freak you out as somebody who's worked in the industry a long time or does it excite you or somewhere in between? Just what are your thoughts on this being that you interact with creators constantly and these tools are really just coming out now? I'm very excited about the future of generative AI. At the moment, I think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg in terms of what creators can make. Um, and a little bit of that is chip processing power. So the length of the shots are a little bit shorter now in terms of what creators can make. So it's around the three to five seconds. Um, so working with creators, that's definitely been some feedback that we've talked about as there's been discussions with generative AI is really the software being able to sustain these longer shots to really realize the vision of the stories that we want to tell. But I have no doubt it's going to get there. Um, a software people looking to like jump in and try stuff right now. Um, Pika is one that a lot of our creators really like. Really awesome, all female team, great community um, in terms of prompts and being able to teach you things. If you join the Discord, it'll be a really int interesting opportunity for you to learn more. I think what I, I definitely want to hear more discussion about how generative AI fits into the Hollywood landscape in terms of the mid-form model. I think a lot of the industry discussion has been around, oh, it's like, as you say, Cameron, it's going to replace a long-form movie. Like there was a, a Tyler Perry article about how he was not investing in his Hollywood studio because he'd just seen Sora and was very freaked out about it. But I think we were always going to have long form. I think how it will definitely slot into the existing studio system is allowing these UGC creators to really bridge to those Hollywood TV shows by giving them tools to realize their vision that they didn't have before. And then someone like a Netflix or a Max identifying like an amazing mid form show and saying, hey, we want to partner with you. We want to give you more resources. We want to offer more talent to go into the show to then put it on a longer streaming service. 
because I, I think that partnership and distribution is always going to be really important to the streamers or studios. And I don't think that's going to go away. Really interesting take. I, I appreciate your thoughts on it. Georgia, just a few more questions, but you know, for aspiring creators or for producers currently interested in mid-form content, what advice would you give them based on your experience with Cold Open? And uh, where do you point them? Obviously, they should check out Cold Open if they have a show that's been distributed. But do you actually suggest creative as well based off of metrics or just kind of help us uh, understand uh, where we should be pointing producers and creators? Yeah. Um, advice, I would say really thinking about building out an ensemble of characters. I think one of the mistakes that sometimes we see midform creators making is creating an epic midform show, but it only has two characters. Right now in the development landscape, a lot of studios are giving feedback to us that the two-hander is less popular in terms of programming, and they really want to see a whole cast of characters who can then scale. Midform creators should be making them all really different, contrasting to create a lot of different energy within the show and just show that you can expand your midform show to a long form show very effectively because you've built out the universe. It won't require such a big lift when you then go to long form. Um, I would also suggest really focusing on your log line. So a lot of feedback that happens from the studios to cold open is that reading a log line, a studio executive might not necessarily understand the hook in the show. It's like it is a murder mystery, but there's a romance element. And getting that across in a two-liner to a really busy studio executive who, no kidding, will, will probably make a decision in the 30 seconds if your show fits within their development mandate is so important. So I think spending time on that, even after you finish the show, is really going to pay off in dividends. That's some really good advice. Lastly, Georgia, looking at the future, how do you see cold opening evolving? And what are your goals for the platform in the next few years? Yeah, we want to 5X our viewer base and continue to foster a lot of engagement around all of the shows. We've had some shows that have really taken across, taken off, and now we want to spread that across the entire ecosystem of Cold Open. The creators have found the feedback on their individual shows to be so valuable as they make more. So continuing to improve that feedback loop for creators and also studios so they can have theirs into where people like characters, what kind of storylines they're picking up on, because that kind of information is so important for investment from the studio to know as it scales to long form, what pieces of this mid-form show should they keep or leave out. Georgia, thank you so much for joining me on production. Uh, such a pleasure. I've learned a lot. Where can listeners find you and learn more about the work that you're doing? They can find us on Cold Open on TikTok. And this is Cold Open with a K. Um, and also Instagram. And we also have a Substack, which is uh, Georgia's Substack for Cold Open Creators. If you want to be finding out more about the different mandates that we're getting in and tips on being a mid-form creator. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, Cameron. On Production is brought to you by Wrapbook. With automated time card calculations, real-time production accounting, and payroll you can run with just a click, Wrapbook makes it easier than ever to manage your entire production from one login. To learn more about how Wrapbook is transforming payroll and production accounting, check out our website at wrapbook.com.